Uh, welcome back. I feel like it's been forever. I think, well, depending on when I get this video out, but at the time I'm filming this, it's already been like two weeks since I posted my last video, which is an eternity for me. I like to post one. I try to post at least one a week, sometimes two, um, and it's not been for lack of effort, man. We're getting out and just kind of like a combination of a few things. One, I think I've skunked three times in the last couple weeks. And then two, the weather's been bad, so I just haven't been able to fish as much. And then three, I did have one day, but that's for a video that I'm working on that I'm gonna post later on. So yeah, it's been a little tough, but hopefully today we can get it done. And I'm fishing a tactic today that I used to fish almost all the time. I would just say like at least once a week as a kid. Um, and I hardly ever do it now, at least in the past few years. I haven't done it very much. And if you've never caught a fish in the surf, a lot of people ask me what my recommendation is and I'm gonna show you exactly what that is today. But really quickly, before we get this video started, I did wanna make one little comment. So a couple of videos back, I went sturgeon fishing, caught a nice one, and I didn't know it at the time, but it is in fact illegal to target sturgeon and to catch and keep sturgeon off of a commercial vessel. And if you follow along with my channel, my kayak is commercially registered. So that was in fact illegal. And I didn't know at the time, but obviously I know it now, I won't be doing that anymore. I got it all sorted out with DFG, but I just wanted to make that comment because I know there was a lot of uh, confusion, I guess. Some people obviously knew the rule and I didn't, so I appreciate the heads up. I mean, I know there's not that many commercial fishermen that watch this channel or really commercial fishing out there in general anyways, but just wanted to make that clear in case there are some people obviously that are interested in commercial fishing and I try to present kind of the commercial side of things, especially since I'm kind of new to the game, um, still kind of learning as we go. And I should have known that, that was my fault. Take full blame for that. Uh, but anyways, in case you are interested in doing some commercial fishing, just know that once you register your boat or vessel as a commercial fishing vessel, you'll no longer be able to target sturgeon and striped bass, actually. I'm not really sure why striped bass is included in that, but anyways, it is. And I'm sure there's a reason for it, I just don't know it. And it's the rule, so anyways. No more sturgeon and no more striped bass from that particular kayak for me at least. So yeah, just wanted to make that clear. I didn't know at the time, I wish I did, but unfortunately that was my fault. Didn't know, now I know, so I won't be doing that anymore. But anyways, moving on from that, apologize for any confusion that might've caused, uh, but hopefully this kind of irons things out. Anyways, today we're fishing in a spot where I used to fish all the time as a kid, and it's this pier right here. And unfortunately, this last winter with all the storms that we had, a few of the piers along the California coast got wrecked by the storm, and this was one of them. And as you can see, I think you can see from the GoPro footage, it just kind of cuts off right there. And that's not because that's the end of the pier, that's because that's the rest of it got cleaned out by these huge waves that came in. And along the beach, there's just it's just littered with you know uh, driftwood, and probably parts of the pier are littered on the beach too. It's all a mess, they're, they're working to clean it up now. But unfortunately, this pier, they're gonna have to just tear it. I mean, there's hardly anything left anyway, so they're probably just gonna tear down what's left here. And I don't really know if there's any plan to rebuild it. I don't think there is at the moment. You know, hopefully they can get the funds to you know, build up a new pier. Hopefully it's a little bit stronger than this one. But uh, at the moment, I don't really know if there are any plans to do that. So it is unfortunate. This pier is somewhat sentimental to me because I actually caught my first ocean striper off of this exact pier right here. And, uh, Man, I don't even know if I can find a picture of it, but if I can, I'll throw it in here. It's when I was probably like, uh, like 13 or 14 maybe. I don't know, I was super young. But anyways, yeah, I think this pier has been around since like the, either the 20s, or the 1920s, 1930s, something like that. So almost a hundred years, if not more. And unfortunately, it finally met its match. It was always kind of a sketchy pier out. There was like pieces falling off of it here and there. And like some of the railing was missing at one point, but now it's completely down. Anyways, I wanted to come out here before they tear it down fully. I'm gonna take a couple casts right next to the pier, see if there's any fish. The extra some pylons or pilings in the water. All right, so I'll show you the exact setup later, but basically fish finder rig with these little guys right here as tank crabs favorite little snack for these little perch. And I'm gonna cast right up next to the pier here to start off. We actually used to catch quite a few perch underneath the pier when we could fish on it. So I know they hang out around the pilings there. 
and let's see if there's still any left. They're definitely not getting fished as hard now as they used to be. Oh, there's a bite. There we go. Fish, fish, first fish of the day. This is the first fish I've caught on film in a while. Hoping to catch some a little bit bigger than this, but that's a good start right there. Nice little female. Hopefully that's a nice 15, 16 inch or someday. All right, well, oftentimes where there's one perch, there's many more. So we're gonna cast right back in. There definitely could be some bigger ones too sitting in there with the, those size fish. So with any luck, we cast our sand crab right back in there. We should be able to find another biter. Oh, there we go. That was a good takedown. Fortunately, I think the fish was just going with the current. So it's not really that big, but yeah, it seems like all the fish in this area are around this size, you know, six to 10 inches. So I think we're gonna move on, but good to catch a few. I wanted to catch a couple next to my childhood pier. All right, quick release. One more thing, I also really quickly wanted to give a shout out to our buddy Austin. I met him at a, a fishing tackle store not too long ago and then we finally got out to go fishing together. He's super knowledgeable about uh, his his home waters, the areas he's fishing. He actually used to be a professional bass fisherman. He rode me down the river for, uh, I think we fished it for like eight hours or so. We got a couple of bites, but unfortunately couldn't connect on any fish to get him to the net. Um, but man, it was just miserable, just pouring rain the whole time. Um, and I felt bad because he had to row me down the whole time because I don't have any experience rowing so I uh, didn't want to put us in any danger there but yeah it was super windy raining the whole time wet cold and obviously no fish for us but it was fun for me I had fun exploring the river it's always nice to fish with people who just really really know the water that they're fishing you know he's fishing for a long time so anyways quick shot to him I know we didn't make a video out of it but uh, I appreciate him for taking me out but his, his videos are really, really quality videos. I enjoy watching all of his stuff. So anyways, check him out. I'll leave him linked in the description. And uh, stay tuned. I'll be fishing with him some more later on in the season. Probably do something a little bit different. So yeah, right now I'm just kind of working my way down the beach. I fished one spot, moved like a half a mile or so. I find that the people who have the most success consistently on in the surf are the ones that cover the most ground. So anyways, that's what we're gonna do. They cover some ground. And then also one more thing. I like to get one of these things. If you're gonna bait and wait, whether you're using you know, sand crabs or any kind of bait really, this is just a sand spike. You can get them at most you know, tackle shops that are near the surf. Um, it's just a lot easier to kind of set your rod in here and then let it do. Oh. Little bite, more little fish. But anyways, yeah, this is a lot easier to kind of set your rod in here than you know, hold it the whole time. Uh, this is not gonna work. Too much seaweed here. So I tried moving down the beach a little bit like I was saying, but down here we're dealing with so much grass, unfishable. So we're gonna make a little move. I think I'm gonna try another beach, see if we can find some fish here. All right, spot number two, we got a nice hole right here. Just toss my sand crab in there, letting it do its magic. A nice little sandbar on each side here. The water's a little bit low, you know, on a high tide, this would probably, I feel like this spot would fish really good, but it's still high enough right now where there could definitely be some fish in there. So hoping I can marinate my sand crab in there long enough for a big one to come find it. Get a good takedown, hopefully put a nice fish on camera. Oh yeah, he's over here trying to catch some sand crabs. And I think I got a big one. Yeah, it's still there. Please be there still. There, it's still there. Probably a little tired out because it was sitting in the rod holder for so long, but 
Definitely a nice fish. <laughs> yeah, this fish isn't fighting very much. But that's a nice fish for sure. Boom! That's what I was saying earlier. It's nice to have that rod hole. You can just kind of stick it in there. Go walk around looking for some sand crabs. And while you're doing that, this nice one came up and hit it. I'm trying to debate. I do love eating fish. Man, I really like eating a surf perch. All right, I'm gonna keep this one. I think I can catch two or three, make a nice meal, and then we'll go from there, but yeah, nice fish. Like I was saying earlier, I put the rod in the rod holder and was over there looking for some sand crabs, and I just took back to boom, my rod was doubled over. This guy was, obviously I didn't fight him very much because he was so tired by the time I got back to it, I already put in his good fight, but that's a nice fish, probably 13 inches or so. Definitely a nice fish, we're gonna take this one home try and get a few more and make a nice meal out of it. So anyways, fish number one. All right, let me show you what we're working with today. This is super simple. Just a really basic fish finder rig. You got a slider here with your weight and it's got a little snap on there so you can clip on whatever size or shape you want. I like to use these pyramid shape, shape weights. Uh, when I'm wanting my sand crab to just sit in the sand and not move. And it'll roll a little bit, but uh, yeah, I just, I feel like these hold bottom the best. I have the two ounce because we're dealing with fairly calm surf today. Um, definitely could go a little bit heavier if I wanted to stick a little bit more, but I actually like it when it rolls a little bit. Um, and then after that, there's a bead to my swivel. And then my leader, like a three, three foot leader or so. And this is, I think this is just like 20 pound mono or... I'm not even sure exactly. Not super important. And then a basic J hook right there. I think that's a size uh, 2 0, which is a little bit on the bigger side. A lot of people, when they're perch fishing, like to use the smaller hooks, like size 1, 2, maybe a 1 knot. Um, but I like to go a little bit bigger. I feel like if I want it, like, I like to catch the bigger perch. So I probably don't catch as many of the smaller ones. Um, but I'm okay with that. I'm hunting for the big one, anyways. Um, so I won't waste as much time with the smaller fish. And I feel like this hook fits the sand crabs a little bit better. So the bait that we're using, oh, here it is, sand crab, just like this, like I was showing earlier. And there's a couple ways to hook it. Some people like to hook it through the head of the sand crab or the tail of the sand crab. And some people like to hook it through the head. And personally, I like to hook it through the head, just like this. One time through, super easy, super simple. And I feel like if a perch is big enough, it's gonna bite that thing and it's gonna get hooked. Sometimes, yeah, the small ones will pick at this side or whatever, but you know, I'm okay to miss a few small ones like I was saying earlier, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Cast it out, let the sand crab do the work. And I know a lot of people, when you talk about surf fishing, a lot of people always say, oh yeah, fish one hour before the high tide, or one hour after the high tide, that kind of window. And yes, I will say that's more often than not the better time to fish. But don't sleep on the low tide. I always tell people, I mean, sometimes you just you just gotta get out when you have free time. And if it happens to be low tide, that doesn't mean that you can't catch fish. And um, like you see here, I mean, this I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty low tide here. And honestly, sometimes, not all the time, the majority of the time, probably not the case, but sometimes they actually bite better at low tide. So you know, fishing's fishing. You never really know what's gonna happen when you come out here. But the point of the story is don't sleep on the low tide. Just because it's low tide, don't use it as an excuse why you're not fishing. Holding the rod though, so I got to feel the pull. 
play on this one. So inside the mouth of these surf perch, you probably won't be able to see it, but inside the mouth of there, in the back of their throat, they have these big, it almost look, feels like rocks on the bottom and the top of their throat. And that's what they used to, you know, suck in those sand crabs and just crunch up all those shells because the shells are super hard. Anyways, fish number two. All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. I know it's kind of a quick video, but just wanted to come out here, come back to my roots, see the piers that I used to fish when I was a kid. Like I said at the beginning of this video, that, that pier is the first pier that I ever caught or the first place I ever caught a striped bass in the ocean. So good memories back then. Hopefully they do rebuild that pier. I don't really know if there's a plan. I think it's TBD for now. And uh, I think if they do, they better build it a little more robustly because that one just got blown away by that last storm. It seems like it's a more common thing in recent years. The, the past few winters, we've had some big swells roll through. A couple of the piers have been damaged. This is definitely the worst I've seen it in recent years. But um, anyways, we'll see how that goes. Good memories on that pier when it was still intact. If you're new to surf fishing and you want to catch some fish, especially surf perch and striped bass too, tie on a sand crab on the fish finder rig. Super easy like I was showing you earlier. Not a lot of knots, not a lot of gear you need. Come out and get some sand crabs, buy some bait, buy all kinds of different bait. Perch will eat a wide variety of different baits. But check the local tackle shop, whatever's closest to the beach you're gonna fish. I'm sure they'll have some insight for you. And you can catch them on artificial so you've seen me catch them on jerk baits many times. Uh, but there's a wide variety of other stuff you need to use as well. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, leave them comment below. Really appreciate all of the support. Just want to reiterate one more time. I really appreciate everyone's just support of the channel over, over the past years, or really since my channel begun. Um, I wouldn't be able to come out here and do this like I do if it wasn't for all of you back at home supporting the channel. So really appreciate it. I had to finally break the strunk streak. skunk streak. I know it's been a while. I actually posted a video on my Patreon, so I'm trying to post more videos on my Patreon this year. So if you guys are interested in some bonus content, check that out. But yeah, finally caught some fish, so happy to finally post another video for you guys. I know it hasn't been that long, but it feels like it's been a long time. So anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for now. Thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one.